Good evening, guys. So I'm pretty excited right now. It's actually under 70 degrees in Florida right now, so... Um, the end of November. And we just got the first real cold snap that dipped below 65 degrees. Yeah, for the winter, for the entire winter. So, I'm recording at night, which is unusual for me, because I'm usually either too tired and shutting the air off while Molly's asleep. Um, leads the house, makes the house get hot pretty quickly in South why I'm wearing a robe because right outside right out that window <laughs> of course I would open it up on the the frame just wanted to prove to you guys I'm not full of baloney even though I stopped eating that years ago it really is night outside. And, um, anyways, I'm wearing this robe. It's cool. It's cool enough to not have the AC on right now. And wear this comfortable robe. I really am envious of you guys who, who get to do this, like, most of the year, but, uh, I know, we got plenty of awesome stuff down here, too. So anyways, I'm, um, for once, very much. Oh, and there's that train again. Hope you guys like that in the background. Um, I'm, I'm very much comfortable, probably in my most comfortable outfit, my nightly attire. But anyways, today... We're talking about tonight, actually. We're talking about Oumuamua. Oumuamua. Thanks to Scoop DG, one of the uh, one of the good friends of the channel. Scoop's been around for for a while, so I appreciate you, man. Um, you said I said thanks for the. Oh, you were commenting on the solar scale video. And I haven't been uh, giving you guys enough astronomy and space. Because I know so many of you like space. And I feel like I've been, I feel like I've been letting you guys down on that front. Space is, it's one of my favorite topics to fall asleep to. So let's talk about this asteroid, this mysterious asteroid. Scoop DG. Just call you Scoop Dog. I don't know why I'm saying DG. Says, if you read the paper recently released by some researchers about Oa Oumuamua, which which means messenger from the past. And, uh, and actually I, I hadn't heard of it. I think it was three weeks ago. That's what the comment says. Um, the unidentified object that tumbled through the solar system about a year ago really fascinating and intriguing at the same time, as there's no certainty about what it actually was. Not ruling out the possibility of artificial or alien intelligence. So I looked up an article about this. This one's on pbs.org. It says, this asteroid 
is our solar system's first known alien visitor. He was actually written in November of 2017. So, um, our solar system has never received any visitors that we've been able to detect until now. About a month ago, so late October 2017, astronomers noticed a fast-moving rocky asteroid hurtling through our solar system. To the astronomers' surprise, this was our first known alien encounter. And on November 20th, they described the mysterious passerby in Nature Letters. So Nature... So, I sound like an academic. Nature is one of the most well-known academic... What do they call it? Publishing? Publish? Reviews? Um, I guess it's called a review. Where academics publish their articles to be peer-reviewed in. And so it linked... And I guess there's a... There's a letter section in there. Anyways, it's a prestigious... It's one of the most well-known publications or places to publish your article in. So, uh, this definitely makes it very credible. They named the asteroid A forward slash 2017 U1 or Oumuamua which means messenger from the past. And this is really cool because I brought up Rendezvous with Rama because um, it, re it really re revivified my love for science fiction when I listened to this book. And I don't know about you, but, but if you listen to books, just so you know, it's a million times better to listen to them with some really soft ambient music in the background. And I also just realized, speaking of sounds, this uh, rope is the softest thing in the world, and it makes proportionally The ambient music and, and actually effects, effects, effects twin. Um, the song Blue Calcs that I always play, I'll probably, probably have playing right now, was in the background. And I don't know, it just burned a, a sense of. I overuse the word, but a sense of awe, like actual wonder and awe into my mind at just how, how, how much of a little itty bitty baby species we are on the technological time scales right now. As far as we've come, our potential is infinite. It really is, and the plot of this book in very, in its essence, I brought it up here, after an asteroid falls, after an asteroid falls in northeast Italy in 2077, creating a major disaster, the government of Earth sets up a space guard system as an early warning of arrivals from deep 
space. The Rama of the title is an alien starship, initially mistaken for an asteroid categorized as 31 forward slash 439. It's detected by astronomers in the year 2131, so about 60, uh, 54 years, something like that, afterwards, after the uh, major asteroid impact in northeast Italy. So it's detected 50 years after that impact, and, and the uh, space guard system is put into effect while still outside the orbit Jupiter of, of Jupiter really stuttered on that one its, its speed is 100,000 kilometers an hour and the angle of its trajectory clearly indicates it's not on a long orbit around the sun but actually comes from interstellar space. Now, hold on a minute, let me, uh, let me actually go ahead and open up OBS right here. And I'm gonna record. Hopefully I can do this. Display capture. I'm gonna record this GIF, this animated GIF here. Or, or you guys are gonna murder me, it's a GIF. You made of water and clearly engineered by some smart people. But um, it's this huge rotating cylinder that's hurtling through our solar system. At 100,000 kilometers an hour, which isn't, you know, it's, what is that, like four, four times as fast as the space station orbits Earth. And it's a cylinder. Let me just stick to Wikipedia. The astronomer's interest, so they, they, they know based on its trajectory, that this thing isn't just orbiting the sun, even on a very, very elliptical orbit, but it's actually on a hyperbolic path, one in which, oh sorry, I actually don't like those bubbly water sounds, so I'll try to minimize that. It's on a, um, an orbit that swings in, and it's like a parabola, like you guys learned about in algebra. It's on a parabolic orbit in the sense that it follows the gravitational, that pretty that same path as would be laid out by a parabola, essentially. But unlike an ellipse, it's not on a closed path, but instead is on a a boundless path, I guess you might say. So it comes in and it's clearly meant to be flung into interstellar space. This space between the stars and it's not gravitationally linked to be tied to our star system, solar system. And um, 
so right away they, they think, wow, this thing's massive and it came from interstellar space and after coming very close to our inner planets, Earth, it's going to return to interstellar space. So, 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 so. Astronomers' interest is further peaked when they realize the asteroid has a rapid rotation period of about four minutes. And now this thing, this thing is exceptionally large. It's rotating, completing one revolution every four minutes. But the kicker is that it's 12 miles, or, um, you know, about 20-something kilometers in diameter. So from here to here. Here to here is uh, 12 miles in diameter, 20 kilometers, and it's 34 miles long, which is about 54 kilometers. So this thing is, if you were standing on the inside of it, looking up to the other side, 12 miles is two and a half times the distance of you to an airplane, a jetliner, traveling at a, uh, what do they call it, cruising altitude of 35,000 feet, which is roughly five miles. So if you're on the inside of this thing, as it's rotating, sucked, stuck to the inner surface, there would be a net g-force pulling down on you, and so it would mimic gravity, of course, and I think it's just so fascinating that this Oumuamua appears to, uh, I don't know, it's just, it appears to share a lot of characteristics with this spacecraft. Obviously not anywhere near the same perfect dimensions, but um, essentially, yeah, it's got a rotation period in four minutes. You look up in the other side, if you can even see it, if there's even enough light, it's going to be two and a half times as high as jet airliners, if you ever see them in the sky. So it's named after Rama, the, uh, the Hindu god, one of them. And it turns out that this thing is a perfect cylinder. So anyways, the, the remainder of the plot is just a fascinating voyage, um, fascinating thought experiment on what it would be like to, on, on what the motives of such a spacecraft might be. And uh, I'd highly recommend reading it. I think there is four uh, three sequels to it, but the first one at least is just fascinating. It's uh, really without giving much away, the, a couple of the investigators go to check it out as it nears Earth, and they actually somehow enter the spacecraft. They, they encounter a bunch of very intentional surprisingly intuitive uh, mechanisms and technologies that seem to be catered towards humans, you know, by
bipedal, two arms, um, roughly our same height, same weight, just different things that would allow them to live on the spacecraft. And uh, I forget why, but they end up staying on it and going on an interstellar voyage. It's just so awe-inspiring. It's it's uh, so thought-provoking, you know, to to just think about the sheer size of the universe and just imagine how much you know what's possible to be made and to evolve after 15 billion years of the universe the universe going about doing what it does, you know, so, okay, so the Oumuamua now is going right, so in our solar system, all orbiting bodies mostly follow elliptical, going back to the article now on Oumuamua, and most orbiting bodies follow elliptical paths, but Oumuamua's case, its path was also hyperbolic. A big U shape. Basically, astronomers followed its path into our solar system and saw that it was much faster than any of our asteroids. And as it sped around the sun, it got slung right back out of here. Also, while most planets, dwarf planets and comets as well, orbit along the same plane, the elliptical plane, Oumuamua, Oumuamua as you can see, ho hopefully if I edit this in, um, instead of orbiting along the same plane as everybody else, all the other planets, it comes in from above and gets flung right back out. It's like a giant boomerang from above. Oumuamua looks weird. First spotted on the Pan-Stars-1 telescope by a team at the University of Hawaii. Oumuamua is nothing like we've ever seen before. It's an unusual, oblong asteroid with a radius of nearly 330 feet and about a quarter mile long. It's pretty big. So it, too, it, too, um, another reason why it reminded me the Rama spacecraft. It's because of its general shape. speed. 
asteroid's side faced when its long side faced Earth. More of its surface area could reflect sunlight, making it more visible. And when the tip of the rock faced us, it was very dim. was a rapidly rotating object, at least the size of a football field, that changed in brightness quite dramatically. Planetary astronomer Karen Meech, who led the University of Hawaii team, said, this change in brightness hints that the Oumuamua could be more than 10 times longer than it is wide. Something that uh, has never actually been seen in our solar system before. So what's it made of? The asteroid has a red, kind of a reddish hue. So it has a reddish hue, and astronomers reported that this redness resembles some of our own comets and asteroids. That color, they noted, is likely from metallic and carbon-rich matter. Some of the fundamental ingredients of life. But even though the asteroid shares this characteristic with most of our solar system's local objects, its hyper hyperbolic orbit says it comes from far, far beyond. So where did it come from and where did it go? No one knows for sure, but astronomers believe that uh, it roughly came from the constellation Vega. That direction, at least. That direction. In the... Sorry, the star Vega in the constellation Lyra. The team will continue following Oumuamua to find out its path to and from us. But Meech and her colleagues now realize that asteroids come in all sizes and shapes. This means that next time, asteroids shouldn't gloss over the strange and quirky because they may be far more interesting than once thought. Yeah, so that was a pretty short article there, but let's see if we got any more information on it. Let's go to let's go to the Atlantic. Astronomers found that the properties of the properties of Oumuamua are unlike 
any of the approximately 750,000 asteroids or comets known to humanity. In our simulations, says Dave Farnochia from JPL, you can see that this could not have been from our solar system. It's simply going too fast. And Meech again says its orbit was completely different too. Scientists can figure out the shape of the orbit of objects that move around our sun. A measurement known as eccentricity. It's, how, uh, it's almost how elongated an egg or a circle can get. Um, I think it has higher eccentricity if it's more elongated and if it's foci are more towards the center, making it more of a circle, then it has lower eccentricity, I think. Could be the reverse, could very easily be the reverse. Um, the highest known eccentricity, which falls between zero and one, is actually <laughs> 1.058 unintuitively um, belongs to a comet that was discovered in 1980. But astronomers interpret this along with other measurements that stray from the norm as a result of uh, getting jostled around as they move past huge planets like Jupiter. So, uh, the eccentricity of the interstellar visitor was nearly 1.2, so I guess every time it goes surpasses 1, leaves the orbit of, leaves the uh, boundary of 0 and 1, if you will, that would be conclusive evidence that its orbital shape is not a bounded What do they call it? Oval ellipse. Um, but it's actually unbounded. So, uh, so it will come in from one direction, get flung out into another, until its new orbital pattern will be dictated by whatever object it next gets gravitationally bounded to, to I guess. So. Um, it, its trajectory is too. Now outside the orbit of Mars, it will pass the orbit of Jupiter next May, which was 2018 this year. Then Neptune in 2022. Wow. Okay, so it's it's moving fast, but not fast enough to uh, to lose sight of it that quickly, I guess. So by 2025. It'll coast beyond Pluto and beyond the outer edge of the Kuiper Belt, which is the field of icy, rocky objects that Pluto is on the innermost lane of, I guess. So, um, yeah, the arrival, the article ends with the arrival of Oumuamua has ignited the astronom 
astronomical community, particularly asteroid researchers like Andy Rifkin, a planetary astronomer at Johns Hopkins University. Its departure feels just as abrupt. Rifkin put his own twist on an old refrain to describe how he felt about Oumuamua fading from view. Don't be sad that it's over. Be happy that you saw it, he says, because it really is amazing that we saw it. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Okay. Well, that was... Uh, 